Aloha. I'm Wendy Lowe, and today we're taking your health back. We're streaming live from our studios in Hawaii, from Think Tech Hawaii Studios downtown Honolulu, and from my home office in Makiki. I'd love to introduce to you a dear friend. His name is Sammy Fayella, or also know, uh, known as Tio, Tio Sam. Tio has an amazing story, and he has a true warrior spirit. I'd like you all to meet my dear friend, Tio Sam. Welcome and aloha, Tio. Aloha to you, Miss Wendy. Yay, you got the Hawaiian spirit going there. That's right. <laughs> so welcome back to the show. I know you've been on once before. And um, since we last had you on the show, you've written a book. So you've been a little bit busy. The book's name is Redemption of a Counter Spy. So Tio, please tell us what this book is all about. And why did you write it? Sure. So, well, thank you for having me on the show, first of all. I'm excited to be here with yes. you all. Um, so I, I wrote the book. I'm a counterintelligence agent by trade. Uh, counter spy is another way uh, to say it. And I wrote the book because I had, I had really struggled with some PTSD after some deployments and, and things. But really, when I started writing the book, I realized that I, I think perhaps the PTSD had started much earlier in my younger years. And so I started thinking about my childhood and I grew up around violence. I grew up in, uh, in a small neighborhood in Lubbock, Texas. It was very violent. It was a predominantly Mexican-American uh, barrio. And uh, I was exposed to just a lot of violence related to drugs and alcohol and just, you know, poverty. And so I grew up with violence. I joined the military, you know, the the military's job is to employ violence as a means to an end, right? Mm -hmm. And so I learned, you know, to, to be a soldier and employ violence. And then as I went out into the world to do my counter spy mission, uh, you know, I was met with just more violence, uh, even in combat er everywhere. And uh, eventually, I guess it took a toll on me and I went through some dark years. And so this book is my journey from that barrio in Lubbock, Texas, all the way. Uh, up to now, and how I was able to to just uh, get get through a lot of the challenges that come along with with that, like depression and suicide and uh, and PTSD. So uh, this is my story, and I hope that it just helps even one person. You know, you don't have to have suffered from any of these things uh, to get something out of this book. Uh, the latest reviews, people are just telling me this book is for everybody, and I'm just really humbled by those reviews. Wow. And you know that you diagnosed yourself with even experiencing PTSD even before signing up for the military. I mean, that's that's big in itself that you established that situation um, even prior. And so that's why, yes, this book shall be for everyone because many of us have experienced traumatic um, neighborhoods and growing up experiences. And so, yes, PTSD doesn't just start when you go to the battlefield. A lot of us have battlefields here right at home. But before we go further, I must ma mahalo you, Teal, because I believe you served 32 plus years um, chasing terrorists and spies, and not only internationally, but also in the United States. So I want to say mahalo for your commitment and for all the years of service to our country. So thank you so much, Teal. Well, thank you for your support, Wendy. Yes, thank you. So Dio, you mentioned suicide. Can you tell us a little bit more about that without giving away the entire book? Sure, yeah, absolutely. So um, I guess the suicide is the pivotal moment in the book. It's, it's almost halfway on, uh, in the book. And it's that pivotal moment because uh, I was in such a dark place. I'd lost my, my faith in God. I didn't believe in God anymore. And I, I was just in a really dark spot. Depression had gripped me like, like, like a bear hug, you know, and I was just, uh, you know how they say that if, if, if you ignore any problem, it only becomes progressively worse. Well, I ignored the PTSD diagnosis and it only became worse. And I started, well, I was having nightmares. I was having a lot of things going on in my life. And one day, you know, I, I, I got a hotel room. I, I got a gun and, uh, I wrote a letter. And I, um, you know, I sat on the bed and uh, I put the gun in my mouth and uh, well, I still, 
I've said this story so many times, I always get choked up around this point because I almost took my own life. I, I started to squeeze that trigger and uh, my kids popped into my mind and I just thought about how they would be dysfunctional and how you know they would have a hard time dealing with it. I have four boys. And so, uh, you know, I just threw the gun down and I just curled up in the fetal position and I just began to cry and cry. And uh, it was it was most definitely the worst, uh, the lowest point in my life. It remains the lowest point to this day. Well, I don't think you can get lower than that, but um, God brought you to that point and he brought you out of that point. And so, wow. So how did you overcome all these challenges with PTSD, depression, and suicide? So that young lady, uh, Rachel, the blonde in the pink shirt, she, uh, she invited me to church oh. just two days, two days after I had a gun in my mouth. She invited me to church. And um, my wife had, she knew my wife, they had partnered with the Juice Plus company. And so my, thank God my wife said yes to Juice Plus because that's how we met Rachel. And that's how, you know, she eventually invited me to church. And I went there to mock people. I'll be honest with you. I went there to kind of laugh and entertain myself. But boy, did God have other plans because <laughs> he got me crying right there in public, you know, and I was angry because I was crying in public because the pastor was talking about everything that I was dealing with you know, this moral guilt, this of not being worthy of heaven, that kind of thing. And it just, it just did something to me. And I went home that day, I fell on my knees in the walk-in closet and I said, okay, God, I, I don't know how to do this, but if you're up there, please help me. I, I need help. I need a lot of help. And, um, you know, he, he did, he showed up and showed off because one of the first things he brought into my life, uh, was there, there, there's three things that I believe helped me to overcome the challenges. And the first thing is whole food nutrition. Um, you know, meeting Rachel and my wife being in the Juice Plus company, um, I was ed being educated on the importance of, of, of uh, whole food nutrition, you know, of eating right and exercise and all of that stuff. And so one thing that I did not know is how much what you eat impacts your mental health. You know, it's really amazing. Um, a dear friend of mine, uh, you may know her, Jennifer Myers, she provided me a book and it was called The, uh, the Transformation, uh, Discovering Wholeness and Healing After Trauma. And it's written by a doctor named James Gordon. Wow. And, you know, I never physically saw a doctor for my PTSD after I was diagnosed, but uh, I certainly listened to this doctor's advice in this book and so what he was talking about was you know when we're stressed see what happens is when we become stressed signals from the brain they particularly uh the pituitary gland they they tell the the cortex right to secrete cortisol and other other stress hormones as well but cortisol helps us retain water it raises our our blood pressure it um it, it also mobilizes sugar from our cells and activating and nourishing and stimulating our, our mental functioning. See, I didn't know that. And the problem is, Wendy, that high levels of cortisol destroy cells in the hippocampus. This is so important because that's the part of the brain that controls your memory and regulates stress. See, mm -hmm. you see how that kind of fits together? It has yes, the yes, ability yes. to lessen our immune response. And check this out, over time, people who are traumatized are unable to appropriately respond to stress because their adrenal gland, it seems, quote unquote, exhausted, right? And oh, by the way, you know, the traumatic event that, that caused your, your neurotransmitter dopamine, that's right, the feel good drug to initially mm -hmm. spike, well, it now tanks, it declines along oh. with the levels of serotonin. And oh. see, while dopamine provides that feel good energy, serotonin just does the exact opposite. It calms you down. Right. So if your serotonin tanks too far, we slip into depression. And this is one of the reasons I, struggling with PTSD, I felt chronically tired all the time. And it's one of the reasons that the, the, the changes caused in the brain by PTSD, they can last just a very long time. And this is what I find so fascinating. According to Dr. Gordon in this book, uh, they can last for the, like the duration 
of a war or an abusive relationship, right? And get this, these responses, right? They can persist even when the actual trauma is long over, right? It repeats itself even when the trauma is long over. Right. And so in his book, Dr. Gordon, uh, he just rattled me with that. I mean, it was just fascinating to me. And, you know, he said our, our brain may replay uh, those traumatic memories over and over again. That's why people get stuck in that yeah. loop. They continue, especially guys dealing with PTSD. It affects us just as profoundly as the original trauma. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? That's just, that's how the body works. And uh, so I, I, I learned that I had to eat right. I, had, I needed whole food nutrition, inner juice plus. That's what juice plus did for me, right? Uh, it gave me the nutrition from over 30 different types of fruits and vegetables and berries. And I also started drinking kombucha because I found also that you have to keep your microbiome healthy. It, it directly affects mental health as well. So I'm learning all this stuff and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm in this. I have to do this because, uh, you know, I wanted to. I want it to get better. Wow. <laughs> and, you know, it's so profound. And, of course, it's not as simple as all of that. But, you, yes, you did the number one thing. You researched and you went for the truth. And we all know that the truth shall, shall set us free. Right. And so when you learn the power of fruits and vegetables, and thank you to Tricia, and thank you to you, Tio, for saying yes to Tricia and first going to church. And then your wife also saying yes to a new lifestyle. And yeah. as I remember, how was your health before you said yes to this new um, lifestyle and community? Boy, it was bad. It was bad. I was. Tell us uh, how bad it was. I was 40 <laughs> pounds heavier than I am now. How many? Right? How many? 40. 40 okay. pounds heavier. Okay. Yep. I was dealing with high blood pressure, uh, high cholesterol. Mm -hmm. diabetes, uh, low potassium, right? All these different ailments. And I, I mean, I just thought that was, well, that's normal. Diabetes runs in my family. No. I'm going to have it too. And I had no idea, you know, about three months after starting on the Juice Plus product and implementing other healthy things, you know, simple changes at a time, like exercise, just started by walking around the block. And then it graduated to going to the gym and stuff. So all these little healthy changes, Changing my my diet, taking Juice Plus, um, I came off of eight prescription medications uh, after about a total of about eight months. I came off of all prescription medications for for all of those things. I'm no longer on prescription meds for anything. That is remarkable, and you know, as you said, you are what you eat, and you know the power of fruits and vegetables. God provided all this great food for us. To right, amen. steward our bodies with, and unfortunately, we fail to consume and do it the simple way. And in my heart, of all hearts, I know that, like an apple, that to me is God's best fast food. You know, containing over ten thousand nutrients and vitamins yeah. per apple. You know, it's got it. You don't even. You basically have to wash it. You don't cut it. You don't cook it. You just eat it. That's the fastest fast food I know of. And why? Why I just don't understand why people don't think an apple is a meal. You know, if like, I'll never go hungry because I always have to eat. But if I don't have time, I'm going to pick up an apple or an orange. I'm going to peel it. I'm going to eat it. And you know what? After consuming that, my body is saying, thank you, mahalo, Wendy. You just made the best choice ever. And, um, and my body rejoices. And yes. I wish that others would understand the value of just the simple apple. And that saying an apple a day will keep the doctor away. Heck, if you ate 10,000 nutrients and vitamins every day into your body, tell me you wouldn't be at your peak and the healthiest that you could be. Right, Teal? You're making me want to go get an apple right now. <laughs> I already it's had mine. <laughs> <Beat ya. laughs> Isn't it just ironic that the one fruit that contributed to the fall of man yeah, <laughs> in that garden. Now, now it provides us with over 10,000 final nutrients, right? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> but God knew. That's the symbol of the apple. <laughs> it's there if you want it. And it'll cause great things for you when you are ready for it. Yeah. Okay. So food was number one in the triad of transformation. You mentioned 
you mentioned that. So what is the second thing? The second thing was community. Let me tell you, Juice Plus people are just some of the best people I have ever met. They have become my tribe, right? But community is so important for people that are trying to recover from trauma, from depression, suicidal ideation, PTSD, right? You need a tribe. Since the beginning, God's plan calls for us to be in community with one another, right? We're, we're relational creatures. That's the way he made us. And, you know, my, my tribe, they get it. The, they just absolutely get it. They encourage, they share, and they're just uh, positive and loving. And I, at first, when I first met them, I thought they were all fake. I thought there's no way people can be this positive and encouraging <laughs> all the time. But lo and behold, they sure are. They celebrate each other's accomplishments and achievements, uh, along with setbacks and, and dark moments in our lives, right? We, we also were there for each other for those times, too. And, and they show up consistently in my life, both for the magnificent and the mundane. They, they know God and absolutely want to be the best versions of themselves uh, that they can be to better serve him and to better serve each other, right? Wow. And that's what I love about, about community. Everybody needs a tribe. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in this, in this COVID-19 restricted environment and, the, and oh, all the variants goodness. that have come up, you know, it's caused many people to, to isolate themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's not good. That's not how God created us. And perhaps, right. you know, somebody out there re, uh, watching, watching right now, perhaps you're dealing with this. Let me tell you something. Living in solitude is exactly what the enemy wants. Yes. Don't give him what he wants. Right. He knows how to employ tried and true, you know, military tactics against us, like cutting off communication. Right. That's one of the things we do right. in a war is you want to cut off the enemy's communications. Well, that's what he wants to do to us, to isolate us and then start whispering in our ear. Right? right. And then that's when so many other mental health issues start to come up. Right. So community is, is so important. Uh, I can't stress that enough. If you don't have a tribe of like minded people that are loving on you, encouraging you, especially those of you who are dealing with depression and mental health issues, you absolutely need a tribe. Do not isolate. Yes. And you hit it right on the nail, especially with the last two years we experienced is exactly what the devil wanted is to us to be div divided you know, and um, to get us isolated and to be able to be conquered. But we know, and we know better, so we shall not let that happen. And for anyone out there, Keo, myself, you can just find us and we'll be your friend and we'll help you through um, these times. And that's an open invitation. And I mean it from our heart. And am I, am I correct, Keo, that if that's someone right. out there needs us, and that's why we're doing this right now, is to reach out to anybody who, were, who was affected within the last two years and even before that. We are here and we're not gonna let you be alone because we are not meant to do life alone. That's As right. our president of our company, Jay Martin says, find yourself a buddy. <laughs> That's right. He and does. we all need a buddy, either a buddy or like um, Theo was saying, a community of loving, positive, encouraging people that can yeah. help build your tribe and be your tribe. And that's what we need because we can't do it alone. We're, we're not meant to go at it alone. We are right. not. We're not equipped that way. And so we've come out of this darkness uh, for the last few years, but a lot of us are light and are seeking, others are seeking more light. So please, as I said, open invitation, come to the light. We are here. Yes. <laughs> so community is so, so important. Buddy, a buddy is so important. So Tio, what is the third? important thing of the transformation so the third uh part of the triad there that i like to call the triad of transformation is that uh spirituality yes. you know spirituality for me is what turned it all around for for permanent good okay it gave me it gave me a sense of peace and balanced the it just balanced the various aspects of my life whether they be physical mental or spiritual and um you know there's there's a lot of various communities out there spiritual communities that encourage one to join up with with like-minded people in spiritual worship such as church attendance right so going to church is important because again we're not meant to do life alone we just talked about that and attending church regularly allows us to be encouraged by our congregation they're they're our family they become our family right and the the relationships we form there you know we're, we're to be enlightened by the word as explained by a pastor Right, we're to serve others through the different venues that a 
a church might provide. That's these things are all important. They give us a sense of belonging, right? And they can also become the, the tribe. That that they can also become the tribe that you need to overcome challenges with depression and suicidal ideation and PTSD. I once I once read an article that talked about how how strong relationships have proven to increase general well-being and even get this bolster life expectancy, right? This article also talked about uh, a study found uh, that, that found a strong association between church attendance and improved health, mood, and well-being. So, you know, spiritual people just have a way of finding ways to, to meet the challenge and continue with purposeful lives, right? That's, a, that's actually a quote from Dr. Stephen Southwick's book, uh, Resilience, the Science of Mastering Life's Greatest Challenges. Yeah. So uh, that's another good book that, that you could pick up. But hey, don't get me wrong. You know, after I was saved, it wasn't like, like I lived happily ever after, right? Like in the, <laughs> in the movies. But I'll tell you what, I have lived peacefully ever since. Oh. There's, no, that's, there's no doubt about that. There's struggles in my life, yes, but spirituality helps me find meaning in my day-to-day struggles, in my wow. painful experiences, right? Wow. It also helps me realize and understand that disappointment is just part of our human experience here on this fallen earth. And I'm not alone in my struggles. You're not alone. And Theo, you know, I can see and feel the joy in your heart. And um, I could just imagine or not even want to think about it, actually, what your wife must have gone through when you were going through that PTSD. I mean, a lot of wives or even husbands are going through that right now and experiencing that. Is there something that you would like to say to that so the, for the spouse of the of a patient of PTSD. Yeah, yeah. So uh, don't give up. You know, yeah. your your spouse is not broken. A lot of times, that's the terms that are used. You know, what you speak to yourself or to others so important. Words are so powerful, and they're you're, they're not broken, right? They they they're dealing with something that was that they experienced that was extraordinary, right? It was an extraordinary event that occurred to just an ordinary person. And we, we don't normally deal with those types of things, right? But whatever it was that caused them to have PTSD or go into depression, have suicidal ideation, you know, whatever it was, uh, it can be reversed. You can reverse it. You can reverse it with these, with these three things that I'm talking about right here. So right. I would encourage anybody out there dealing with this, listen, just try it. I'm not, I'm not an expert on anything. I'm not I'm not a doctor. I'm not a psychologist. I'm just the guy that dealt with it and figured it out. Okay? Wow. And if it can work for me, it can work for you too. Right. But the, you know, the good thing for you, Theo, is that you probably, I mean, I know you turn your back on God, so I don't think you turn to prayer, but God had his eye on you and he knew he wanted to save you. And he brought you all the right angels he into did. your life. And the good thing is that you were aware of the angels in your life and you responded in a positive way. So sometimes people don't see that, you know, that there someone's out there trying to help them. We pray and we pray and we say, where were you? And he says, remember that lady, Trisha, that I sent to you? She was supposed to lead you to back to church. And then, yeah. you know, and then give you all the right in, uh, knowledge about stewarding your body well, but you, you turned her away. I was yeah. there. So, not just, you know, um, praying or not in your case, I don't think that you were really praying for it, but he just believed in you and he yeah. brought these angels to you. So the joy and the gift is that you acknowledged it, you received it, and you were able to find joy and happiness and look at you. Thank you, Lord, for saving Teal so that Amen. he can be a voice to the voiceless. Um, right now, I have a question uh, from one of the viewer, viewers and it says, what inspired you? to write this book, Redemption of a Counter Spy? Oh, that's a great question. Thank you for asking that. So I had actually been encouraged by multiple people to tell my story and by speaking it and writing it. So I thought, okay, maybe I'll write a book. And I had written maybe a chapter and a half, almost two. But then on 20 January of this year, a friend of mine who had just retired from the military as a general, a two-star general, killed himself yeah. on 20 January of this year. And I just felt God calling me saying, what are you waiting for? Write this book. It could mm -hmm. help somebody. Yeah. And so I, I wrote the book in about three weeks after that, inspired by the death of my friend. But hopefully 
um, somebody reads a book, even if just one person picks up my book and says, okay, I think, I, you know, I'm not going to pull the trigger today. I think I can do this. That it would have been worth it. You know, uh, that's what I, that's what the goal is to just help other people, you know, right. um, find, find, find their way through this life, you know? Right. And, you know, um, even though you lost your friend, you know, when the family of this, uh, two-star general reads the book they may be able to put some light into what he was experiencing and maybe help them through the time of mourning as well so you know um i'm glad again that you um realize what your goal and your mission is and you took that uh, challenge upon yourself to do the book and that you would be able to save others and other families and let them have the joy that you enjoy right now so yeah. God bless you for doing that and for, for just knowing, just knowing and for, for hearing God speak into your heart. So thank you. Thank you. Um, so, Theo, what's, what's next for you? What's next for me? Well, in the immediate future, um, people have uh, asked me to come and speak, in, including my church, which I'm just super ecstatic. So on the 3rd of July here this coming Sunday, I'm, I'm doing all three services at my church, Revolution Church here in Selma. And uh, I'll be speaking, telling my story and, and talking about Jesus and, and Juice Plus, you know, at wow. the, uh, the church. Uh, if anybody wants to catch that, you can catch it live online at RevYourLife.com. Uh, you can go there and watch it. So that's Sunday, three services in the morning, 9 30, 11, and then 12 30. And then I'm going to just continue. Uh, that that sort of pattern through the end of the uh, the calendar year. Um, I'm speaking in Vegas at a at a convention called Up Armor with Project Healing Heroes. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm speaking at um, hope, hopefully we speaking at Black Rifle Coffee Company. Uh, and I'm going to continue doing my my work now. I haven't just because I'm an author now. You know, it didn't go to my head. I'm still <laughs> going down to San Antonio and taking donations to the homeless. I'm still working to bring an after-school tutoring and mentoring program for at-risk kids here in San Antonio. I'm still uh, leading my nonprofit that I co-founded uh, to help Christian missionaries around the world. I'm still advocating for Juice Plus. I'm still director of safety at my church. You know, I don't tell you all that to brag. I tell you all that to say, look, this is where people who have struggled with these types of mental health issues, this is where you can thrive. You can get to this point. Uh, wow. <laughs> okay. And real quick, I know you were commissioned as a Colson Fellow in yes, May of yeah. 2021. What is a Colson Fellow? So a Colson Fellow, uh, the, the, the program is named after Chuck Colson, who used to be an attorney yes. under the Nixon administration. Yes, yes. And he yes. actually went to he went to prison after yes. the Watergate scandal and he found Jesus and yes. he started the biggest prison the ministry. Biggest. On he is amazing. Yeah. And yes. so they, the Colson Fellows is a program, you know, modeled after him, where they teach biblical worldview, so that yes. you can you, you can look at the culture in a biblical lens, and you can teach others to also uh, have a good biblical foundation and not let the wow. culture and the subtle subtleness of the culture change you, uh, wow. or or lead you astray from Jesus. Thank you so much. Thank you. So your next stop shall be Hawaii because we need you here. We have many. Um, that would love to hear your story live. And I would wait, I can't wait until the day that you get here. But for now, Tio, we run out of time. I just want to say mahalo to Tio Sam for sharing your dynamic journey and inspiring us to take our health back with your triad of transformation. We'll be back in two weeks with taking your health back with Wendy Lowe. So mahalo, Tio, and we'll see you again soon with your next book. All right. Come to Hawaii. Aloha. Awesome. Thank, you. Thank you. Love you. Thank you for Love all your support. You. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, 
please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.